You've probably never heard of the Leyden Frost Effect, but you might have seen it in action. If you take some water and you pour it on a really hot stove top, the water will just kind of beat up and it doesn't burn away like you think it should burn away right away, right? When you turn the stove on low heat, the water just kind of sits there for a while and then once it gets up to heat, it evaporates. If you turn a stove on, like say halfway, as soon as you pour the water on, it'll start boiling. But once you turn the stove up all the way and you can get it as hot as you can get, the water, instead of just boiling away instantly, actually floats on the surface of the metal. That's because a very thin layer of it is evaporating and it's kind of cushioning it from the metal pan. Oh, cool. Look. She's going in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. It's doing it on its own. So somebody on my Facebook page had a really good idea and you should already be friends with me on Facebook by now. He had a really interesting question. He said, what if you heated up a steel ball and dropped it through water? And here's the two things that could happen. It could fall faster through the water because just like the drop of water in the hot pan, the water is never actually touching the pan. So if you heated up a ball and you dropped it through the water, there would be a cushioning layer of water vapor around the ball. So maybe it would have reduced drag and fall straight through the water like it was not even there. The other thing that could happen is the force of the water boiling against the ball will actually stop it from falling as fast and it would fall slower than it normally would fall through water. And I've got four different sized steel balls and one copper ball. So we're gonna try some metals with different densities and different sizes and see if it works. I also built this stand so I can reliably drop the balls from a specific height above the water. So the first thing I need to do is drop all five spheres into the water and record it with a high-speed camera. This is to set up a baseline and to make sure this is a valid experiment. Now it's time to drop the heated spheres into the water. You can probably tell I drew some inspiration from Red Hot Nickelball's channel. I just picked up the hot ball and dropped it into the water. I'm recording it in high-speed video, so let's view the results now. Now before I did this experiment, I did a little bit of background research and I read a couple papers on the subject. I found two papers from two different groups. So the first paper I read, they had a crazy increase in falling speed, like 85%, but the problem is they were doing it in something like acetone, a really low boiling point liquid. And the second group did it in water, but they only noticed a 10% increase in velocity. Not looking good. Remember when I said that there's two things that can happen? They can either go through the water faster or go through the water slower? I was wrong. There was a third thing that could happen. Nothing. After going through the video footage, I don't think there's any statistically significant increase or decrease in the speed that these things felt. And I did it three more times and I got the same results each time. Well, I guess that's it guys. So I will see you guys next time. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> hey, you should probably do what she says and press those like and subscribe buttons. Then don't forget to come back here because I'm going to show you some extras right now. All right, we're gonna try one more thing. We're gonna put these polymer water beads into this pan and they hold like 100 times their weight in water or something like that, so they should just bounce around. They're bouncing around everywhere already. <laughs> more! So that's pretty cool. Now let's move on to our real experiment. Where'd those go? Everywhere! When you heat up copper red hot in the atmosphere, it forms this black layer of copper oxide. Now, this is initially protected from contact with the water by the Leiden frost effect, but after the ball cools and the water touches its sides, it instantly boils, ripping off the black copper oxide layer. Here's another example of that exact moment slowed down 20 times normal speed. So this is the first paper I read. It doesn't really directly relate to what I'm doing because they didn't do it in water, but they still reported an increase in velocity, which means I'm at least on the right track here. So this is the more interesting paper. I guess I totally missed the most important part of this paper when I first read it, and that is the graph on the top right. It shows how fast a sphere will fall at different temperatures. Now, I was heating these spheres as hot as I can get them, but actually the ideal temperature is 300 degrees Celsius, which I way overshot. The graph is saying that a 300 degree sphere falling through water is faster than a room temperature sphere, but the hotter you heat it, the slower it gets. So I guess both hypotheses were right after all.